Mona? I'm grateful for Peach Mango Shakes because I was gone all week and I came home and my husband hugged me and said, the shakes came in and they're so good. <laughs> so when you're the first, like your favorite person greets you with something like that, like that just is good stuff. So I'm super grateful for peach mango shakes, even though I haven't tried them yet. This time I've tried them in the past. So that's my gratitude for the day. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, we have gratefuls in the chat. So Laura says she's grateful for this team. So we're wherever she is, I guess she can't hop up and chat. And then um, I'm assuming that is Anna that says Jojo Bennington. She said she can't talk, but she's grateful for all of us. And we're grateful for her as well, as well as Laura. Okay. Anybody else has one to share? If I don't, I don't feel that this information may take the entire hour. So, but I wanted to share something with, valuable with you guys that I have discovered um, in the last few weeks. Um, it has shed some light on why I do what I do, and I feel like. If you know yourself a little bit better, you can understand how to get around your tendencies to do certain things. Um, so, for example, how many of you would agree that our habits make or break our success? Would you all agree with that? Yeah, I think so too. And sometimes you may agree with this. It, you know what you need to do, but you don't know how to make yourself do it. Um, so we all have our quirks and we all have our, you know, uh, strengths and weaknesses. And I think if we learn ourselves a little bit better, we'll understand how to push through um, the weaknesses and how to utilize our strengths better. So I've got some notes. That's why I keep looking over here. And um, I also think that if you learn how to relate to other people, better uh, according to what you know drives them or drives them away <laughs> then this could also help your relationships and since this is a relationship business this helps your business and so um, I just felt this is a super simple thing and it was really just a really cool tool to add to the tool belt as far as relating to people um, how, how many of you have learned about the color code? They teach about this at UIA, yeah? Cool. So this is very similar, it's just four different tendencies, and it was created by Gretchen Rubin, who you may have heard of her. She wrote the book, The Happiest Project, the, um, I think it's called Better Than Before, and then The Four Tendencies. So the four tendencies is what I was going to share with you guys today. And um, I'm going to actually share my screen in just a little bit because learning, I found learning about it before you know what your specific tendency, it's not as intriguing because you're not really ready to hear it, hear the information yet. Um, so I thought I would share my screen and we could all take this quiz together. And... Bear with me because I was just trying to practice beforehand. Can you all see my screen? Okay. All right, so what I want you to do, if you have a sheet of paper and a pen handy, <clears throat> we're all gonna take this quiz together. Give me a couple seconds. All right, so the number one question is, have you kept a New Year's resolution where you weren't accountable to anyone, a resolution like drinking water, going to the gym, keeping a journal? Um, and if you answer for the first selection or the second or the third or the fourth, I will give you a letter and you'll write that letter down beside number one. So go ahead and read through all of the responses and then whichever one you agree with, hang on, I'll designate a letter. I'll let you read through. Okay. 
Okay, so I'll go ahead and start. If you agreed with the first response, I want you to write the letter R. The second response, write the letter Q. Third response, write the letter O. And if the last one resonated with you the most, write the letter U. Okay. Everybody want to give me a thumbs up? Let me know when we're ready to move on to the next. Cool. Okay. And I'll totally link this too um, for anybody who wants to take the quiz by themselves just to kind of re make sure that they answered everything correctly. Uh, number two, which statement describes your view about commitments to yourself? So go ahead and read through the responses and I'll designate the letters again. And when you're done reading through, go ahead and give a thumbs up so I know to go forward. All right. So the first response, if you agreed with that the most, then write the letter O. The second response, write the letter U. Third response, the letter Q. And the fourth is the letter R. Oh, I'm just going to choose something so that it lets me go forward. All right, number three, at times we feel frustrated by ourselves. Are you most likely to feel frustrated because, and read through and then give me the thumbs up when you're ready. Okay, so the first response, go ahead and write the letter U. Second response, write the letter R. Third response is the O. And the fourth is the Q. All right. When you formed a healthy habit in the past, what helped you stick to it? I'll be right back. Okay, thumbs up when you're ready. Yeah, okay. So the first response, go ahead and write letter U. Yeah. Uh, the second response, O. 
third response, Q, as in queen. And the fourth response, the letter R. Okay, number five. Sorry, there's not many questions left. It's really short. If people complain about your behavior, you'd be least surprised to hear them say about you that you All right, first response, if you answered that one, it'd be a Q as in queen. Second response is O. Third response is a R. And the fourth one, oh, sorry, so sorry. Sorry, the third response is a U. And the fourth one is the R. All right. Okay, and which describes you best? All right, first response is an R. Second one is a Q, as in question. Third response is U, as in umbrella. And the last one is O. Ah, sorry. Okay, this is where it got a little tricky, so you may want to go back and do the quiz over by yourself, um, but go, we'll go ahead and like keep going. And I, I'm going to use my best guesses according to how much, how well I know this information. So the first one, if you tend to agree or disagree, mark that answer, but try to not be neutral. Um, if you are neutral, we'll just skip it for you. You won't write anything down. So people get frustrated with you because if they've asked you to do something, you're less likely to do it even if they are a boss or a client. So if you agree with this, your letter is R. If you disagree, write the letter O. And the second one, I do what I think is the most, makes the most sense according to my judgment, even if it means ignoring the rules or other people's expectations. And if you tend to agree, this is a Q for you. You know what? And if you tend to disagree, I would write the letter O. <clears throat> Number three is the commitments to others should never be broken, but commitments to myself can be broken. And if you agree with that, your letter is O. I'm just going to go with what we agree with because I'm not sure. I could be wrong about the disagreements. So mark what you agree with. If you agree with that one, your letter is O. Some 
Sometimes I won't do something I want to do just because somebody wants me to do it. If you agree, that's an R. I've sometimes described myself as a people pleaser. If you agree with that, write O. And I don't mind breaking rules or violate, violating convention. I often enjoy it. Write an R if that's in alignment with your tendency. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> All right, so number seven, tend to disagree or agree. Um, you've struggled with addiction. Again, these are a little trickier. If you agree with that, then you can write the letters O, R, yeah, O and R. Temptations. When I'm trying to resist a strong temptation, it's easier for me to avoid that temptation altogether rather than indulge in moderation. If you agree with this, then your letter is U. Number nine, if you have ever suddenly or dramatically changed your appearance, you can write the letter O if you agree. And the last one is, I've had a hard time mentally putting issues from my day aside, which makes it hard for me to fall asleep. And this, if you agree, is a cue. So this is the end, finally. <laughs> Sorry, that took a while, guys. All right, so I want you to look at your sheet of paper there and see what is the letter that has the highest number of counts. So what did you write down the most? And I want you to keep that in mind as I go over each um, of the tendencies and what, what the letters stand for. So there's four, obviously. The first one, if you got a U, is called an upholder. So these people get stuff done. They do what is asked. And if they also decide to do something, they get it done as well. So these people are great at New Year's resolutions, but they're also great at taking orders. And um, so let me back up a little bit, actually. This whole thing is about really what comes down to inner and outer expectations. So um, like meeting a deadline for the crystal executive um, bonuses, that is an outer expectation that somebody else that has put a deadline and then expecting you to meet it. Um, an inner expectation is something that you've decided to do, like wake up at 5 a.m., um, something like that, a good habit maybe that no one knows about. And the upholders, they, how many of, we, of you got upholder? Just curious. Anybody? No? Oh, wow. It's okay. That's, it's not surprising, actually. There are very few upholders, true upholders. Um, the next one is the questioner. So how many got the questioner? Yeah, I knew it. I knew it, Jojo. <laughs> so questioners are the ones who say, tell me why. Give me more information. Oh, but why? You know, like they have to understand what they're doing before they will actually act on it. So outer expectations, they can be very dismissive of them until they really understand um, and it matches with their internal expectations. So um, next one is the obliger. Who all got the obliger? Mary. I'm one too. Lori, I was pretty surprised about that. Okay. Uh, Mona said your husband is a total questioner. Okay. Okay. Mona, have you heard of these tendencies before? I just finished reading the, not the tendencies, not the happiness, but the greater than, better than great book. The better than before? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. But I've never taken yeah. the quiz and she didn't have the quiz in there. So gotcha. when I read the book, I thought I was an upholder, but according to this quiz, I think I'm an obliger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about the obligers, since that is me, that is the one I've studied the most. And 
I actually regretted being an obliger because these people do much better with outer expectations versus inner. So, and also let me tell you, explain why this like shed so much light on my personal situation is that I've made the transition from corporate America to becoming my own boss in network marketing. And I really could not understand the struggle of, God, I know what to do. Why can't I make myself do it? And so I put all these labels on myself, such as procrastinator, I'm lazy, I'm unmotivated. I guess I just have really low self-esteem. I'm too shy, you know, and really when uh, I read the book, I, I listened to the book, it dives deeper than just the quiz and it helped. She actually named all those labels that I was giving myself and she said, no, for obligers, you have a simple solution. You just need outer accountability. So you just need someone who is expecting this certain thing of you and going to hold your feet to the fire. And when I learned that, it kind of helped lift a huge weight off my shoulders, first of all. And then I could stop labeling myself or thinking that something was inherently wrong with me. Um, and now I have the key, I feel, to move forward, to unlock my own success according to my tendency. So the book dives into each one of these, and I still haven't even covered the rebel. So who all got the rebel? I'm curious. Nobody? I know Anna's a rebel. Oh, yeah, Anna did. <laughs> so rebels, they are the people who say, you can't make me, but neither can I. <laughs> so they struggle with both inner and outer expectations. Um, however, once you take this quiz, it, it actually gives you, again, the simple solution that can help pull you through your own downfalls and your tendency. So for rebels, I know you need choice and freedom and a sense of identity because you need to feel aligned with whatever you're doing. So it has to make sense, yes, but it's mostly because you want to, not because someone's asking you to or telling you to. Um, and you need choice. You need to be able to choose what you want to do. So um, those are the four tendencies. And I, ever since discovering this, it's helped me in my own business, like, like get a bird's eye view of why I've been struggling so much. Why have I been hitting my head against this glass ceiling? And I'm like, aha, I know why now. And then also I've quizzed everybody, <laughs> everybody around me. So my husband, I, I quizzed him. He was an upholder, and if you, you know, read or listen to the audiobook, it helps you to identify how better to relate to someone if they have a different tendency than you, and I feel like that's beneficial in our business because um, I, could, I could already tell you some of the people who I've talked to in the past, like my uncle, for instance, He's totally a rebel. I already know. He's a rebel. And it totally explains why the way that I went about sharing isogenics with him drove him away. Like he literally, we, we, it got awkward because I wasn't appealing to his tendency. I was giving him expectations. Whereas an upholder would have been like, okay, cool. Or a obliger would have been, sure, I'll do it. Um, a questioner probably would have said, but why? You know, but <laughs> this gives you the tools that you need to better relate and understand other people and what sets them off or what lights them up. Um, so that's, that's the main thing that I wanted to share tonight. Does anybody have, Oh, the book is called the four tendencies and it's written by Gretchen Rubin. And I'll link also the quiz so that you can take it yourself or send it to other people. And I'm going to actually be sending this quiz, I've already decided, to every person that I enroll because I'm going to be working with them. I need to know what they like, how they want to, do they need hand-holding? Do they despise hand-holding? Do they need freedom to just do their thing? Do they need exact rules? Do they need more information? Um, so. I'm going to be giving them what they need 
And uh, hopefully that will help with retention, with deepening our relationships, um, and just, you know, being able to improve my own relationship skills. Because again, this is a relationship business. So I will turn it back over. <laughs> so I guess if somebody doesn't want to take the test, then they would be a rebel. Right? <laughs> in fact, she even said this in the book. She said, you almost can't get a rebel to take it. Um, especially if they feel like they're being manipulated or whatever, but you can kind of ask these questions nonchalantly and then gather your own and, or the telltale sign is no, they're not going to take it <laughs> regardless. Um, that's funny that you said that because I was half O's and half R's and like none of those answers there was only one question that like the answer really applied otherwise it's like the color coded test they ask questions and none of those answers would apply to me so I'm like fuck it I'm not taking this test <laughs> that's not an answer I would add none of those four answers on almost every single question would ever apply or be the answer I would give so, Lori that shit I me so I like this one for learning how to interact with people. <laughs> I like that one too. Oh, I, I totally thought you were a rebel, Lori. And that's why when you said obliger, I was like, so what? Uh, well, only because I got five O's, I got four R's, but I had to force myself to answer. <laughs> I mean, so it's probably shit luck. I could have forced myself to answer five R's and gotten rebel. Cause yeah, no, that's just there. That yeah. doesn't apply. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So one more thing. I was like, you only got one choice. The very first question, you only got one choice for no. Well, I'm a no, but not for that reason. But I had to choose <laughs> no because the other ones were all yes. So that's stupid. Like whoever wrote the test, I want to punch them. Because that's <laughs> not, that's not helpful. All like, right. Rebel makes so much more sense. I think I'm fired up because I'm like, I was stupid. <laughs> Strong. <laughs> rebel. There's no O's in there. It's rebel, rebel, rebel. Yeah, there is O's. I can see both sides of that for you, actually. That's kind of funny. But... Well, I'm a Libra. So uh, the in terms of the O, it's I do everything for everybody else, which offsets my I don't want to do anything for anybody. Right. I hate everybody, but I bake everybody cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's also one other thing that I forgot to mention. Um, as far as obligers go, they have what's called, it's a phenomenon she's termed obliger rebellion, meaning where you give, you give, you give, you give, you give, and then you're like, F it, I'm just not going to give anymore. I'm done. You're dead to me or whatever. I mean, you just like completely switch and then you turn into a rebel. So, I mean, it still could apply, I guess, but my guess for you was totally rebel. Totally. Jeanette, did you take the test? What did right, you well, get? I want to know. Because we got everybody but Jeanette, I think. I'll unmute you. There you go. <laughs> I did. I, I, took almost, I took almost all of it, and I got nine of the O's, so that'd be the obliger. Awesome. Yeah, and Mona's just asked to, um, I'm such an obliger, for real, and um, what do you think about setting accountability challenges? I think that's great. I think that's phenomenal, because um, once I understood that's my one key, then I was like racking my brain, well, how can I set up accountability for building my business, or um, even meeting my health goals, you know, so we all need to, to maybe brainstorm a little bit and see how, how we can help each other hold um, each other accountable. One thing that I did um, over a year ago, and um, this actually really, really worked well for me, obligers vary on what they deem valuable as far as holding them accountable. So some people can pay for coaching and the money uh, factor there is so valuable that they will not go against what they've paid for. So that works for some people. Me, I will flush all the money down the drain. It, I hate to say that, but if I were to pay for something to hold me accountable, I've done it in the past, it doesn't work for me. But what I have done before that did work was post my daily activity 
in the group for everybody to see. I made myself accountable by saying ahead of time, I'm going to do this. I commit to doing this to all of you. And then you get to see my daily activity. And therefore, I feel obliged to share what I've been doing. And it kind of actually makes me go for it even more because I would be embarrassed if I had a day where I didn't reach out to new people or a day that I didn't do follow ups or whatever. So my opinion of other people's opinions of me, that's what I deem valuable as far as holding my feet to the fire, like for real. So, so now that we know we have a bunch of team of obligers, um, <laughs> And I question everything. <laughs> did you know I was a questioner? I like when, totally guess that. <laughs> totally did. Everyone's like, yes. Yes. Really? <laughs> okay. Do I ask a lot of questions? Do I? I, do, I probably do, right? I'm asking questions right now. That's funny. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think it's a good thing. Cause to, so to know that we have a bunch of obligers on the team. So now... As a questioner and a rebel, how do we support an obliger um, to be more successful? I missed the question, Jojo. I'm sorry. How, um, Mona? You keep raising. Go, go ahead. So to answer your question, because I'm an obliger, um, just like Jenny. Like Jenny was saying, if I post, then I'm going to contact three people today. And so if you were to just ask as a questioner, Jenny, how are those three reach outs? How did you reach out to three people? If Jenny doesn't have a response or if I don't have a response, you better believe I'm going to like text three people real quick <laughs> just so that I have an answer for you. So like the rebel and the questioner, anybody can help the obligers simply by asking, how were those reach outs today? Mm. Or in my situation, like I have, right now we're doing couch to 5k. We've done squat challenges. We do nine day challenges. If I don't post, if someone were to ask me, have you been running? How's that going for you? I'm going to go run and then I'm going to come back and respond to you, but I'm not going to respond to you until I go run as a really good obliger. Mm. So that's whereas, how you keep it in check. Whereas that would not work for a, rebe a rebel though, because if you were to ask them, how about them contacts? How many of you had today? They'd be like, oh, none of your business. I don't feel like it. <laughs> How's it going with the phone calls, Lori? <laughs> I'm going to ignore your call from now on. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, that's really interesting. So will you post the test up in the, in the Rock Your Life page so we can, yeah. everybody can go in and like take the full yeah. thing and see what it comes out to? And I still would definitely encourage you if you're, if this intrigues you whatsoever, or if you want to dive deeper into your tendency or other people's tendencies to help learn the field better like I did I seriously read the book or listen to the book it gives you so much insight and so many ahas I had by by listening so well not only because we were um we and we just did the on the women's call um a couple of Thursdays ago we did the five love languages so we had some people go in and take their tests and have their their spouse or their kids or whatever take the test as well. And um, cause for, for real, I think that that, especially um, when you're looking at team recognition, so at, on a business side of it, that I could, um, you know, send a cash price to somebody. And if I sent a cash price to somebody else, they would go, eh, just call me up and tell me that I'm awesome. <laughs> I would be totally happy. So it's, it, everyone's so different in that respect, but we tend to um, speak to someone in our love language. So mm -hmm. like acts of service is totally my thing. And somebody does some cool stuff for me, like that's my thing. And so I do that for other people, but you know, Vinny's, Vinny's love language is words of affirmation. So I can just like go, yo dude, <laughs> you rock. And that's totally good. He could care less whether or not I, you know, wash his pants he, he, he cares that that makes no difference whatsoever but so when you look at those like all of those things mixed up I think it could be a really cool um, view of how to deal with everyone 
-hmm. So cool. You have to get the book and go through it. But I would love to take the full test. So oh, definitely beneficial. Despite being a rebel, as you all seem to think, like the O thing totally made sense because I'm in a book club and we happen to be, it would start 1,000 people and we happen to be reading love languages. But like, I don't want to let Marie down that I didn't read or I didn't show up. Like the past three weeks, she and I have been the only two people on the call. There's 35 or something women in this Empower Her book club. Um, and her and I are the only people that show up, but I don't want like Marie to log in and not anybody be there. So like, it might be 2.30 in the afternoon on a Wednesday, but I like stop what I'm doing. I leave the beach or whatever, because I don't want to let her down. Um, yeah. And so, and then I'm affirmation, words of affirmation to Jojo. So you can tell Vinny I'm on his side. Like I don't ever want a loose sight star ever from anybody. I don't need knickknacks. I don't need gifts but you see people do what their love language tends to be. So if you get a gift from somebody, it's probably because they, that's their love language. But yeah. Not a total rebel. I don't just skip the call because I hate being on the phone and Zoom. <laughs> no, well, you, I, and I could see that. I don't want to let them down. They're, you know, right. leaders in our company. And so I want to represent. I, I could see that in you. As a rebel, you also have, you respond to freedom, to choice, but also a sense of identity. So maybe, Lori, your identity is that you're not a person that doesn't show up. You're not a person that lets everyone down. Or, or maybe um, also rebels, whoever they care about, too, they, that also will help them commit or keep to their commitments or expectations a lot more. Whereas if you're not attached or it's just rule because, then you're going to like, no. So. You're like a Tootsie Pop Larry, so you're rebel on the outside and soft gooey stuff in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> More like a sour patch. <laughs> yeah, where you like slap them and be mean, and then you're like kissing and say, oh, I love you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. Thank you. No, it's totally beneficial. I'm glad you shared it, and I hope. Um, so Gretchen will probably make a little money off of us because I think her video will help you grab the book. Yeah. And um, and we'll uh, I'll take the test. So thank you. Awesome. Please post that up. And I think um, I will. Awesome. I will. Um, and there was one more thing too that I was going to share in addition, but I feel like I would do a disservice to the information should I share it from my view. Um, I'll post that in the group as well. But this is going to maybe appeal to the obligers and the rebels the most. There is that thing where you're like, I know what to do. I just cannot seem to make myself do it. And then I felt like, even though I need outer accountability, sometimes I still like, how do I make myself do this one little simple thing still? I don't need an outer accountability to make myself do one little thing. So a key to that I found is called something called the five second rule. Some of you may have heard about this it's by Mel Robbins. Um, she changed her life by counting backwards. It sounds so dumb. She counted backwards from five, four, three, two, one, and then she would do that one little thing. And what I like about it is that she explains the science that goes behind it, how you rewire your brain neural pathways change when you actually count backwards and then you just act before your brain has time to trick you into not acting. So um, those of you that struggle with inaction, this is a really good tool as well. So I will leave the quiz and then below that quiz um, an excerpt to the five second rule as well if you want to check that out. Okay. Cool. Yeah. After you post the quiz, this is prelude into next week for social media stuff. Um, make a maybe make a um, a survey or a poll in the group like who's what. Yeah. And then see, so you know, like put it up and say, hey, everybody, take the quiz. Like do that today or tomorrow, and then on Wednesday or Thursday, be like, all right, did anybody have time to take the quiz? You know, here are the four choices. What are you? And just to get an idea of what actually is on the team, other than the seven of us. Yes, that sounds awesome. Yeah, idea. I'm curious. Yeah, it'll be interesting just to see. <laughs> yeah. All right. And there's Lori always going, how do I make a post out of that? So. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> if only that would transform into make a phone call. <laughs> <sighs> Working okay. on it. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Anybody have anything they want to add? Everyone good? I think we're good. That was good. Thanks, Jenny. She's Thank like, you, I Jenny. have an this idea. It was. It was really good. Very cool. All right, guys. We good? And so as Lori or was saying, we are going to um, do some social media training next week. So we always need updated training because as things are changing and um, things are moving around, then we have you know, different things that we can do. So cool. Lori's going to take lead on that one. And we will thank you, Miss Jenny Rose. Big kisses. Mm, appreciate you. Thank you for everything. <laughs> and um, all right, everybody, have a great week. Go rock your life. Bye, y'all. Bye.